Garber's talking debut could be put off no longer. But how would she go over with audiences who'd already rejected so many silent stars? Baby. Well, shall I serve it in a pail? I'll let it be down to the ground. It is a wonderful moment that you wait endlessly for, for Garbo to arrive and to finally uh, speak. And, and it is a wonderful voice. Her voice completely fit what you wanted her to sound like. It's, it's um, a, a very sensual sound. I'm going to have another drink. What do you say? Will you have something on me? Sure thing. Thalberg had arranged voice lessons and given her an ideal role as a Swedish immigrant. Sit over here. Let's be friends, huh? She used to love to run her rushes backwards. She would never look at them forward. So you know what they look like. I said, Greta, do you want to see your rushes on the, the, the movieola this morning? You run it backwards? <laughs> She'd laugh her head off. She had more fun. She never went into the projection room. I don't know when she saw the picture. She probably sneaked into some theater with a big hat sometime, and nobody knew it. But I never knew when she saw the picture. When sound films came in, uh, the dialogue that she was given, with the few exceptions here and there, was not particularly brilliant. Um, Garbo didn't begin with the words, she began with the thoughts, and they came through the eyes. And what came out of her mouth was fascinating because of the tone of her voice and her delivery. You didn't need all those words when you had Garbo's eyes. No one had inspired the kind of mass hysteria that Garbo did and fueled it by her refusal to give interviews or to be photographed so that by making herself scarcer and scarcer, she unwittingly produced the opposite effect, which was to generate more interest in her. Obviously, I don't think it wasn't just Garbo who chose not to talk. I think MGM knew they didn't want her to talk. They had an unguided missile on their hands, and if they allowed her to have an interview, they would have a real problem. With someone like Garbo, who was so unpredictable, I mean, Garbo didn't take orders from anyone. She didn't listen to anyone. This woman simply did not fit the mold at all of an MGM star, except that she was beautiful, glamorous, and very talented, and the biggest star in the world. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are now in the famous forecourt of Grauman's Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. Garbo personified the glamour the studio had made its own. MGM was happy to give her a remarkable degree of control because her presence helped to keep it the world's finest studio. I think that was the secret of MGM, that there was this created mystique about it being a very special studio which in some ways mainly due to Thalberg, although one mustn't underestimate Mayor's shrewdness as a businessman. I'm proud to be the head of an organization that can turn out the product we've been turning out. Well, he obviously was a tyrant, but Garbo he had immense respect for, and I think 
she was by just by being Garbo, she was the only one who could keep him in line. On the other hand, she had this enormous respect for Thalberg, whom she would allow on, on, on the set very often, which was quite rare for her. Grand Hotel was Thalberg's brainchild. He had the idea for this, the first of the all-star pictures, in which Garbo played a highly strung Russian ballerina. You must forgive me. I've had a very trying evening. I was so alone, suddenly you were there. Garbo had wanted John Gilbert for this role. Nervous to be working with the great John Barrymore instead, Garbo eventually told him, you have no idea what it means to me to play opposite so perfect an artist. I'd like to take you in my arms and not let anything happen to you, ever. How tired you are. Yes, tired. And uh, alone? So alone. It's confusing in a grand hotel whether she is giving a mannered performance or is she playing a mannered ballerina. And on top of that, she's a Swedish woman speaking English uh, with a Russian accent. So she, you, know, you got to give her credit. I can't dance tonight. It will pass. It will pass, madame. Pearls are cold. Everything is cold and finished. I would say the closest that Garbo ever came to giving a bad performance would be that she couldn't get her line readings to mean what we, in listening in English, would think they should mean, because she didn't understand what she was saying. Huh. I mean, uh, I don't think that we have come quite to the end. Indeed, she said years later, oh, 